Hi, my name is Dipen Barik. I'm the professor and chairman of the Department of Urology at the University of Miami Miller School of Medicine and the director of robotic surgery. Uh, our manuscript in the British Journal of Urology International highlights our findings from a study that compares the outcomes of robotic assisted laparoscopic radical cystectomy versus the traditional open approach in men and women with bladder cancer. Uh, this was done in a single institution format uh, and this was in the context of a much larger study that is currently about to be completed in the United States. In our study, we compared the preoperative baseline called health-related quality of life outcome parameters and compared them at multiple time intervals after the surgery at three months, six months, nine months, and 12 months and, and published our results. So my name is Sanaj Bunnan. I'm an assistant professor at the Department of Urology, University of Miami Miller School of Medicine. And as mentioned earlier, this was a randomized trial comparing open versus robotic cystectomy and health-related quality of life outcomes. The study used a patient-reported questionnaire that's been very well validated in bladder cancer and enrolled 40 patients equally with 20 in each arm to a robotic and open procedure. At baseline, the patients were fairly equivalent in terms of important clinical and demographic features with the exception of the open patients having slightly more blood loss. Uh, when the study actually compared post-operative quality of life uh, to baseline, there was no difference between the open and the robotic arms. And in fact, after adjusting for relevant clinical and demographic factors, again, there was really no appreciable difference between the robotic and open procedures. The only exception to that was at six months, there was a slightly higher 2.5 improvement in score for patients that underwent robotic surgery. Now, although this was statistically significant, the clinical relevance of it is questionable. So I think the main merits of this study was unlike a lot of the literature, which is observational and retrospective in nature, this was done in a randomized trial. So a lot of the inherent selection biases that go into observational studies are not apparent here. I think the main limitation of the study that there was only 40 patients. So the small sample size may question some of the findings. However, as mentioned earlier, this was mainly a feasibility study for a much larger multi-institutional trial that will be much more informative with more patients and a lot more follow-up. So in summary, or in conclusion, our study highlights and reinforces the value of doing prospective randomized clinical trials while evaluating new technology. Thank you.